A good hydrogen alpha filter can help take your astrophotography to the next level. But is a 12 nanometer hydrogen alpha filter from Astronomic any good? I'm going to tell you all about it in this video. How's it going everybody, it's Rosie here for Astrophotography and I'm back with another review. Real fast, I just want to thank today's sponsor, myself. If you want reviews, how-tos and vlogs for all things astrophotography, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell and you never miss an upload. So hydrogen alpha, what is the big deal? Well, in astrophotography, hydrogen alpha turns this into this, this into this, and can also make gorgeous grayscale images. And all the hydrogen alpha you're gonna to see today has been taken with this astronomic filter that's on trial today. This filter in particular allows you 12 nanometers of hydrogen alpha goodness. It then gandals everything else out there. It doesn't let anything else pass. This filter in particular was designed for Canon APS-C bodies. They're your crop body cameras, 450D, 600D, 80D, things like that. There are variants available for full frame cameras, Sony cameras, Nikon cameras, as well as 1.25 inch and two inch variants. And this filter was actually loaned to me from the widescreen center for review. So thank you very much to those guys. By the way, if you're interested in any of these filters I'm talking about, there'll be links to everything in the description below. So go be sure to check that out. So the main strength of this filter is its versatility. As the name implies, this literally clips into the aperture of your camera body, covering the sensor as close as it can be. This means you can then use your standard camera lenses as long as they're not crop frame camera lenses or telescope adapters. Several companies do clip in filters, but the astronomic variant in particular seems to have some kind of legendary status. Everyone seems to know about it and talk about it. And it's a bit of a household name for hydrogen alpha filters. The 12 nanometer band pass is almost perfect. It blocks a lot of light pollution. It also resists a lot of moon glow, but more on that later. Whilst not blocking so much light that you have to really crank up your exposure times or your ISO to get a nice picture on a DSLR. Depending on how dexterous you are, installation can be a little bit fiddly. You know, you're gonna take the filter, you're gonna blow the dust off, you're gonna wipe it down, and then you're gonna put it into the camera. And as you put it in, if you're anything like me, at the last moment, you're gonna slip and you're gonna to touch the glass with your finger on the backside. You're gonna leave a fingerprint, then you gotta pull it out, clean it down and do it all over again. So it can be a little bit fiddly, but it's not too bad. Just don't be like me. The data that was coming through this filter was good quality. It looks like the transmission they're advertising is bang on. And I didn't see any halos with this filter. So I used a competitive filter at a narrower bandwidth. So it's not directly comparable, but with that filter, I saw halos around the bright star Navi in Cassiopeia. With the astronomic, I didn't see halos around Arm Attack, which is brighter. That's in Orion's belt. That's brighter than Navi. So I'm happy to say I didn't get any halos with this, so good job, guys. 12 nanometers, whilst really nice band pass, as mentioned, isn't completely resistant to moon glow. So one added benefit of HA filters is that they block the moon. Now, they aren't designed to do this. This is just one of those added benefits that you don't complain about. But I'm about to complain about it. So let's compare. The two pictures you're about to see are both shot with the same equipment. A Canon 600D that's Astro modified, a Skywatcher EvoStar 80ED at F6 because of the reducer, and they're on the same mount. The only difference was the date. The first picture is a five minute sub exposure of the flaming star nebula. This was earlier on in the moon period around first quarter moon. As you can see, there's a decent amount of contrast. There's a good picture and I'm happy with this. Let's skip ahead to full moon now. This is another five minute long exposure, same equipment as I mentioned. And can you see the difference? There's a lot more washout and less contrast. Now I was still able to use this image and still produce the final result. I'm not complaining about that. And I admit the Flaming Star Nebula was quite close to the moon. You probably don't want to shoot that close, but I wanted to test this filter's durability out. So, Full moon, it begins to wash out a little bit, but you can still use the data. The build quality is solid. The casing is nice and firm. This is my first astronomic filter I've been in contact with, and this is good, I like it. A lot of people swear by on their household name. However, with reputation comes price. At the time of this video, this filter is 180 pounds. The 1.25 inch variant is 116 pounds. Admittedly, the clip-in filter has 
more glass in it, and it's more versatile, but does that translate to 64 pounds more expensive? I don't know. As a standard consumer, I don't know the construction method either, but I struggle to see why it's 64 pounds more expensive. If anyone knows the actual answer to it, please drop a comment and let me know. Do I think this filter is worth the hype, particularly the clip-in version? If you're a DSLR user and you are mainly using camera lenses or lenses and telescopes like I do, then this is invaluable. Just put this into the body, put it, into your, put it onto your star tracker or your mount and off you go, you're collecting hydrogen alpha data. The 1.25 two inch versions are gonna be the same substrate and the same material. So you're getting the same filter, just in a different body for those. And if you can't afford the 266 pounds of the two inch filter, which I know I can't, then go ahead and get the clipping filter if you are using a DSLR. To surmise, if you want a nice filter to hold onto as an investment, then the 12 nanometer is definitely a good way to go. I didn't notice any halos, which to me is a complete deal breaker. And if you're using a DSLR and sky tracker, then you'll find immeasurable use out of the clip-in version. I think the moon filtration could have been a little bit better, but I think that's down to the fact it's 12 nanometers and not narrower. So that's no fault of astronomic, it's just 12 nanometers. If you use two inch filters, I want a nice filter to invest in, then at two inch and 66 pound, which is a bit high in my opinion, you've got a quality product and I reckon you'll keep reaching back to it. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, a big fat thumbs down if you disliked it. And if I've missed anything, then let me know in the comments below. And that's the review. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you have clear skies and keep looking up and keep them cameras clicking. See you later.